Welcome to the first episode of The Business Pulse. This is a new podcast for the Kingsport Times News, just discussing all things business. So we'll just get right down to it. Um, so today I have two guests with, with me here today. Um, so if you all don't mind to introduce yourselves. Yeah. My name is Bree Roberts, and I'm the director of the new Appalachian Highlands Women's Business Center. And I am Andrea Salyer. I am the chief business development officer at the Kingsport Chamber, overseeing all things small business. Awesome. Well, yeah, just give me a little bit of background on, you know, what what the Women's Business Center is, kind of kind of how that got started. Yeah, so the Women's Business Center is actually backed by the SBA. It's funded by the SBA, so the U.S. Small Business Association. Um, and we actually got the role from Andrea applying for it. So different locations around the country apply. They see a need for a Women's Business Center in their area. So we were able to be able to get one this year. We were actually one of 17. Mm-hmm. So and we're actually probably the smallest area other bigger cities like Honolulu, D.C., Houston, L.A. got their second one. So we're really fortunate to be able to get one in our area. Yeah. And, you know, I've talked to you before about how this is something that's been years in the making. You know, it's something that's really been a passion project for you, if you wanted to talk about that. Yeah, it was, you know, it definitely definitely was one of the first things that I wanted to get done uh, in Kingsport in the new role. Uh, But I quickly learned that it was not as easy as I thought, you know, to get an asset like that in the region. So yes, it was a it was a over you know 18 year type of uh, endeavor to get that, and I'm grateful for that because we learned a lot, mm-hmm. you know, in that 18 years. We formed a lot of relationships in that 18 years. So that was really necessary for us to get it. Um, but working with women, you know, entrepreneurs has been something that I've done. Uh, seems like forever (laughs) Uh, and half of the uh, uh, clients that we do actually see are happen to be women so I know there's a need I'm a woman you know so yeah I'm happy that we have it I'm happy that Bree's here yeah yeah and you you've been in the role a couple months now yes (laughs) Um, kind kind of kick-started everything so tell me a little bit about what that's been like Mm -hmm. Uh, we we just had my 90-day review so you know (laughs) I've got the job still Um, but yeah I feel like it was when I first interviewed it was uh, Andrea said, you know, it's going to be a lot of groundwork because we are starting. It was a lot more groundwork yes. than I thought, which is it was great. I feel like I learned a lot more skills. It challenged me. It helped me mm-hmm. be a better professional. Um, but it is a lot of trying to get it established while also running, <laughs> getting it uh, to a place where people want to come in yeah. while trying to figure out where, what, how I'm going to help them. <laughs> so it's been a lot, but it's been really fun to learn a lot of new skills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, you cover a 10 county yes. area, so that's <laughs> yes. a, that's a lot of ground to cover mm-hmm. and that's going to take time to get to know yes, your clients exactly. and everything. Yep. Yeah. That was another reason that we were so excited to have the Women's Business Center because you could as you pointed out, you can only serve so many people as much as you try. Mm-hmm. So to have that help, that additional person uh in the field uh to be able to help was is essential yeah. and we are planning to grow that even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, what has the day-to-day looked like for you kind of, you know, in these first 90 days? I'm sure it's been hectic. Yes, I feel like, yeah, every day looks a little bit different. So um, it depends on, you know, what my focus is at the moment. So I'm, you know, in the middle of meeting with clients now. But the first, like, month and a half, it was a lot of training on how to meet with clients, what to do when they come in for help. Um, So now I'm a little bit more past the initial training. Um, So coming in whenever clients make an appointment, trying to see how I can help their business grow, try to help them get funding, government contracts, things like that. Um, also trying to plan networking events. I know there's a lot of need for women to have a place to meet with other women, bounce ideas off of each other. Uh, we've already had two. We had one in July. We had one in August. We've got one next month. And we already had some great feedback. A lot of women come back and say that they've already made great friendships. They're already frequenting each other's businesses, which is, you know, literally the goal. So I'm glad that that's working out. Um, and then also we've got uh, a part-time employee at our WBC. Her name's Caroline, so she does our events and coordination, communications coordination. So she's also working with her a lot and seeing how we can get our social media running. So we've got a lot of different boxes going on. So yeah. it's a lot of you know juggling, but it's a lot of fun juggling. So mm-hmm. yeah, you've been doing the is it monthly events? Yes, yes. Yep. So, so just talk a little bit about that. What yeah. you all have done so far? So our very first event was in July. It was the end of July. Um, so we did a lunch and learn essentially. We had catered lunch. The first one was a lot more chill, laid back. It was morely, mostly just introducing our new program. Um, so our goal was to get 20 women to come. We were afraid that might have been a little too high, 
but we actually had 46 women show up, so we were very proud of that. Um, I think, you know, we had a lot of people come, connect. Uh, I was able to meet a lot of new people that I didn't know in the area. And it wasn't just Kingsport. That's what I was a little bit worried that since we're in Kingsport Chamber, you know, that's where my office is, it would just be Kingsport. But we actually had quite a few people. We had even somebody come from Virginia. They've heard about it. Yeah, Bristol, Johnson City. We had some people from Morristown and Greenville. So my goal is to get further out there, but it wasn't just Kingsport, which was great. And we had more than double our goal people coming. And then in August was our first more actually seminar topic based. Um, we had her name is Jennifer Yu. She has a marketing company, so she came in and did a very basic marketing 101 for business owners. So far, a lot of the clients I've met with, a lot of them are, were needing marketing help. So I saw that was a need. We got that kicked off, um, which that was actually a great event. Everybody came with notebooks, you know, ready, asking her questions after meeting with her. And that's where I met with people afterwards. They made like a follow-up appointment with me. We talked about what they learned, how they can apply it. We've got, you know, I've got a lot of follow-ups for them in 30 days to see how they're applying what they learned. And then next week, we're doing a understanding financial statements. So a lot of clients that we've met with, they maybe don't have, you know, a business degree, accounting degree, which is totally fine. Yeah. But when they're using like something like QuickBooks, they don't understand what QuickBooks is spitting out to them at the end of the year with their you know, financial statements. They don't understand what the difference is between a balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement. So this is where we're going to have you know, a certified QuickBo- QuickBooks pro coming in. She's also a CPA, bookkeeping. So she has you know, decades of experience. She's going to come in and explain this is you know, what the difference is between your profit and loss and income statement is or a cash flow statement is. So hopefully that can be of use because I've heard a lot of women say, I don't know what this means. Why is this line out on two different sheets? Why are you, do I have two different sheets? So hopefully that'll help them understand the, actually their finances of the business because, you know, that's their end goal. That's why they're in business is to either create an extra or initial income, right? And, you know, I know that a huge part of this is just getting the word out about what services mm-hmm. you offer and yes. the areas you cover. So what has that process been like? How have you been able to get the word out? Mostly right now, uh, social media, you know, everybody's using social media. Word of mouth is another big one. Um, I feel like what I learned in business school is, you know, word of mouth is golden. So we're, Caroline and I are doing, you know, we had a big market strategy when we first started or after we got her hired. Uh, We've got, you know, I think six different social media channels. We're trying to post multiple times a week, ideally every day, but, you know, we've got other jobs to do. Um, So we're, you know, posting as much as we can. We've got a newsletter going out um, with at the events, we try to invite people to bring somebody next time or at least share their newsletter. We're trying to connect with other chambers in the area. Like you said, I've covered 10 counties and think that's, I think, at least eight chambers in that area. So trying to connect with the other chambers to see how we could partner and how they, how I can help them in their area because they know their needs. Like, I don't know Morristown's needs very well, but Morristown's chambers does. So I would love to, you know, get over there, all the other chambers, see what I can do and help over there. So that could also, you know, help spread more word of mouth. Right. And the other big thing, of course, is being located at the chamber. Yeah. That has really been critical to getting getting the word out. Uh, so you, we have that channel, and the, like you said, the connection with the chambers. But, you know, the chamber has over 1,700 connections, mm-hmm. you know. So to be able to use that, and that was one of the strengths of our proposal uh, to SBA yeah. was to have that Women's Business Center located at the chamber next to the Small Business Development Center. Mm-hmm. So... Um, we're able to refer uh, clients to one another. In fact, I met with someone today who uh, was starting a business. She was getting it started, and she still has to do those initial things, mm-hmm. you know, setting up the business, getting the LLC and doing all that. And we did talk about contracting as a possibility for her in the future. So she's not ready for that today, but guess what? She's going to become mm-hmm. also a client of the Women's Business Center and learn how uh, getting her business certified as woman-owned, what what would that do for her, and just how to pursue contract opportunities. So I love the fact that, like, I don't have to do it all. You know, (laughs) there's uh, different stages that businesses are in, and so they need different things at different times. Awesome. Well, yeah, um, you know, there's such a startup culture in this region. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of entrepreneurship in this area. Um, You all are a great resource for that. Yeah. And I'm sure that's a lot of the clients that you're seeing as well. And, and the time that it takes for someone to actually start a business, I mean, honestly, I have been doing this for a very long time, 18 years, but I, I could have talked to someone 10 years ago about a business and they're just now getting it going. I mean, the gestation period can be lengthy. Mm-hmm. And so that I think is the most uh, enjoyable part of the, the, the position of the role is seeing something go from concept to actually in business, mm-hmm. right? And it may take a while. So we're here. Uh, for them 
when when they're ready yeah. you know as they as they get to it and there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one, you know you're mm -hmm. meeting with these clients yep. but these people are starting this up um how has that been, you know, kind of you're seeing the impact firsthand that this is having on the people and their businesses? Yeah. So, yeah, one of the things I do, like you said, is one on ones. Um, a lot of them are I've been meeting with. I've already established a business. I've had a few that were looking to start a business. And that's when we would refer back to each other. So kind of ping pong each other. <laughs> so um, but the ones I've seen that have already started, um, I'll often so, so, so far, a lot of them are coming in for marketing help. So. Um, it's been nice to be able to see what they're doing, kind of, you know, go through social medias with them, see what their marketing plan is, try to make a marketing plan if they don't have one. Um, I feel like a lot of people don't understand that, you know, it's not just posting on Facebook every day. There's mm -hmm. more to it. So trying to teach them things like that. And then I feel like before I just had went to a conference, but I met with a few clients uh, before the conference and two of them were very similar issues with, with marketing. And I gave them, you know, homework. I, I'll see you in 30 days, but here's what you're going to be doing. And it was so cool to, you know, go on the Women's Business Center Instagram and see them actually posting stuff. So I was like, wow, look, you guys are doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I can only help you so much in a meeting, but if you're not going to do the homework after to help your business, yeah. you know, it's kind of, you know. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, and another thing, you know, with what Bree just said, you know, you walk into the center, the Women's Business Center, and you think all that you need is marketing. Yep. And guess what? There's a whole lot of other mm -hmm. things that may be not getting done uh, in the business. And so it's our job to, to make them aware, yep. you know, that there are other parts of the business that have to be uh, tended to as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Yeah, there's so many parts that go into running a business. You know, yes. it's not just the getting the place open. Yeah. You know, you've got to do the marketing side, the finance mm -hmm. side. There's, there's so many things you have to learn and be able to deal with yes. when you're going through those motions. For sure. But um, I guess I would be interested to know um, the Cosby connection and kind of know how the, how the chamber has partnered with the Women's Business Center as, as this startup has happened. With Cosby, I remember when I started with the program, you know, we were just Kingsport. Certainly, just the Kingsport mm -hmm. Office of Small Business Development and Entrepreneurship. But as, as Bree pointed out, people were coming from all over the place. You know, so it was difficult to turn someone away mm -hmm. uh, and say, hey, you know, I can't help you. So we, we, we've always been looking for ways to help more people. And so by having Cosby be the umbrella and then bringing on the uh, Small Business Development Center affiliate office, in 2011 mm -hmm. and now the Women's Business Center in 2024. Four? Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, but we have added on those uh, components that help us reach more mm -hmm. clients, uh, to, be, to be fair. So um, we plan to continue growing, um, but we right now we're building the infrastructure. We've got a good uh, base, a good foundation, thank goodness for the Kingsport Chamber, uh, and that's, again, that's how we were able to get this uh, grant opportunity uh, with the SBA. They saw that stability and they saw mm -hmm. actually how the chamber was able to incubate programs because we have different programs at the chamber, as you know, the Cosby program, we have, you know, young professional program, we have the tourism, but that was just evidence that, you know, we can grow a program. So we're excited about this opportunity. The contract with SBA is five years to get started. Mm -hmm. So the first five years, um, and we're just working on building it and really differentiating it from Cosby, though, too. I think yeah. that's probably your question, because people ask every what's day, the difference? what's the difference? <laughs> Why so are you we, here? <laughs> yeah, so we want to be very clear you know, about the focus of the Women's Business Center, which is truly on the procurement piece. So I'll let Bree talk maybe about the conference, uh, annual conference that yeah. we would plan to do, but the procurement and also uh, funding, which is important to all, you know, all, everybody in the ecosystem wants to help uh, clients with that. But in Bree's uh, role to help them really get bankable, get ready, mm -hmm. get, yeah. get bankable. What do we need to do to prepare credit reports and things like that uh, to get bankable? And then the very unique thing uh, with the Women's Business Center are just the women issues, like balancing home and, and the business, yep. you know, sexual harassment. Um, there's so many things that are really unique to women, and that's where, to me, the magic is mm -hmm. with the Women's Business Center. So if someone comes in, we had this conversation just yesterday, and they say, I want to start a business. How do you do that? Well, your SBDC can help you with mm -hmm. that. We can, we can take care of that. Now, if you come in like my client today and say, I want to start a business and I'm thinking 
at some point I want to do business with the federal government, that's when I'm going to refer them to, to Bree. Mm -hmm. So there is, a, there is actually um, a big difference, you know, on, on what we're going to be uh, working on. Mm -hmm. We're going to collaborate defini definitely on some things, but there's a lot of work uh, that she'll be doing that I will not. I'll yeah. be referring it to her. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Like at my conference, we learned a, a little bit about government contracting, which is, you know, one of the, the key things that makes uh, me different than Cosby um, or SBDC. But to do, be able to get a government contract, women's business need to be women business certified. Mm -hmm. So like tomorrow I have an SBA training on certifications and how to go through that process. So I feel like women maybe don't know all the hoops they need to drill. I mean, even just business owners in general don't know all the hoops when they're first starting. So that's, you know, how we can work together is showing them the different hoops, helping them through the different hoops. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and another difference maker, I think, is I have a role uh, with the Tennessee Lottery on their advisory council for minority participation. So what that means is this is a group of, uh, of people, folks like myself, that are sitting with Tennessee Lottery, and we want to make sure that minorities are getting their piece of, of, of mm -hmm. contract opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so fortunately, the Tennessee Lottery always exceeding their goal, so they're not you know, lacking in any of the areas. But that's what we want to happen with the Women's Business Center is we want to see some businesses from here, yeah. from this region, get business with Tennessee Lottery because that's what's not happening. So I'm sitting there at that table, and most of the business that's getting done with Tennessee Lottery is getting done with business owners in Memphis, in Nashville. And so I love that Tennessee Lottery said we want representation from the entire state. So they're saying, hey, East Tennessee, get over here. Mm -hmm. So we want to prepare and, and cultivate you know, uh, uh, businesses, woman-owned companies that can do business with the, the Tennessee Lottery. Yeah. So uh, just get that directory of woman-owned businesses. That's mm -hmm. yes, obviously we're on, on our yep. dream list. Yes. <laughs> um, but the goal is not just to, you know, talk about certifications, but to get business. Like, we yep. want to see you get business. We want to see you get funded. So that's what, those are the metrics that are really important for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the next question I kind of had, you know, it doesn't steer as much to the Women's Business Center, but um, what would you have to say about, you know, the economic development that you're seeing through working with these clients and that sort of thing? I mean, I don't have statistics, you know, like real data at the moment, but like I think I've seen already, you know, I've been in business or I've been in the job for 30 or three months, 90 days, and I've already met with at least 20 clients that are already started their business, trying to see how they can grow. Um, I think there's just so much data. I think we've you put out data with Cosby and stuff. Like, the more women are in business or are in charge of the business, the more money goes back into the economy. Women just tend to give back more, use more of their paycheck. So that's you know part of our goal is to get women to do that because the more that women succeed succeed in business, the more the economy, local econ economy grows, um, and that's just only going to keep helping it by mm -hmm. you know word of mouth. Hey, WBC, Cosby, SBDC, help me grow my business they can help you grow too. So that's the, the big goal, right, is to keep us all mm -hmm. thriving and that's the way we're gonna do it. And, and as far as, you know, exit rates, right? Mm -hmm. Exit rates for businesses, startup rates for businesses. When you look at it on a national scale, it's probably, it's about 50-50. Yeah. Like it stays really close to that, to yeah. that level. And it has been, if you look at the past 10 years, there's really only three years where the number of starts outpaced the number of, of exits. Mm -hmm. And so with the pandemic, um, certainly, you know, we had more exits at that time. And, and, and the year after the pandemic, we had a lot of exits, Huge, yeah. right? But right now, you know, in 2024, it's normal. You know, you get one, you lose one, pretty much. Um, so the activity level remains mm -hmm. super busy. You know, when I started the job, I told Bree, I said, I, I was waiting for it to have a like a rest. Yeah. <laughs> when do I get to rest, right? And there's no rest period. Yeah. Because actually, when people are on their Christmas break, they're gonna come see about starting a business yes. for next year. Um, so it's, it's exciting, mm -hmm. you know, that so many uh, people are thinking entrepreneurially. And actually, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, I think that number has increased. People know, and with the economy, they have to have more than one income stream. Yeah. So they've got a job and they've got what a side doing? hustle, yep. mm -hmm. right? And they've got some e-commerce thing going on. So, I mean, let's be honest, it's two or three different income streams that you really need mm -hmm. to kind of get comfortable now, yeah. you know? So 
it's it's very busy. People are excited about different businesses that, yeah. that they can get started with a, a small entry fee. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? <laughs> so those digital businesses, wow, they're, they're taking off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I hear a lot of local business owners will talk about, you know, the first year is always the hardest. Yes. Um, and, you know, I heard one person talking about how the summer is hard, especially locally, because, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people travel yep. for vacation mm-hmm. and things like that. So I'm sure those are some of the conversations you're hearing yeah. as well. Yeah. That, and I feel like there's a statistic that businesses fall the first two years. So mm-hmm. if you make it for th- past the first hard year, you still have another hard year. And mm-hmm. if you make it past the second year, then you're, I think, uh, substantially better set for the rest of your life. I mean, you're, mm-hmm. not, yeah. you're not for sure set, but yeah. so many fall within the last the first two years. So that's our it, goal is to get them yeah. over that big threshold. Yeah. And you just got to plan for that seasonality. Like, mm-hmm. no kidding, in Kingsport, oh, football yeah. is going to mess you up. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you got to have a plan. So, mm-hmm. so just like uh, Bree pointed out, you know, those family vacations, you got to be – ready to have have something in place. And what I don't see happening enough that I'd love to see is more businesses getting on the Bristol races, yeah. you know? I know when I first uh, got to town, I keep bringing up this kind of thing, but I saw the Bristol baby and I was like, what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't see it as much now. Mm-hmm, and yeah. we should get back to that, you know, way of marketing uh, the business. Yeah. Just getting on board on Fun Fest, mm-hmm. like you should have a Fun Fest promo, you yeah. should have mm-hmm. a Bristol. Uh, race promo you should have you know the football stuff going on um yeah you gotta you gotta have a plan yeah uh for your marketing and and we don't want business owners to just like wait because it is hard when you walk into a business and it's quiet Mm -hmm, and you know everybody's at the game yes exactly (laughs) and it's like they should know that too yeah you know so what are you going to do to recapture that business yeah but the best season is coming up Right. Yeah. The, hol- the hol- yes. Christmas holidays. Yeah, what are they going to do for that? <laughs> so that's where we need our businesses to really think ahead and, and have a plan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I think you mentioned Fun Fest. Mm-hmm. I know, especially in Kingsport, um, you know, there's, that brings a lot of people yes. in and that sort of thing. <laughs> so just making sure that business owners are aware mm-hmm. of kind of what the seasonal calendar is mm-hmm. for yeah. the communities they service, I think, is also really important. Yeah. Like right. that's the summer, it was like a week or two before Fun Fest, I had somebody come in talking about getting a food truck started. They were interested in that business. I was like, well, have you heard of Fun Fest? Like, maybe oh. go scope that out and yeah. see. Because if you're trying to get that done before next year, you could be one of those vendors. And mm-hmm. like, oh, I hadn't even heard of it. I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to know about Fun Fest if you sure. want to be a food truck vendor. Yes. <laughs> well, and that's what's uh, what I think is so special about this region is there's so many little festivals yes. and things like that that people mm-hmm. can, get, can get plugged in with yeah. and be a part of. Yes. Right. And then business owners, owners have to make their own mm-hmm. block party. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And, and really work uh, with each other. I, I'm seeing that happen a lot yes. more, and I'm happy to see that the business owners are getting together. And then when they do that, guess what we do? We get out of their way. Yeah. Or how, how can we support mm-hmm. what they're doing? We're not trying to, you know, take that over yeah. or, or we re- want them to redo succeed. what they're doing. Exactly. We want them to succeed. And really the best way uh, is to work with the other business owners that have that veteran status, yeah. like they've been through some things, like work with them, yeah. collaborate on projects, market each other. Those are the businesses that, that tend to make it, if you notice, mm-hmm. the ones that are not just in it for yeah. them. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we talked about how, you know, you, you're in the first few months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> what is kind of your outlook moving forward or some things that you're looking forward to, you know, in the next year or so? Yeah, so one thing we're trying to get going is uh, we don't have an exact term for it yet, but a workshop so women come and basically become a part of a cohort so they can be in classes with each other, but we're they're trying to learn specific topics. So we're trying to see um, what topics to cover for that, if there's a need for, you know, a whole finance cohort, marketing strategy, things like that. Um, but that's my big goal is to get these cohorts going so women can really get into the nitty gritty, have a once a week meeting, Zoom in person, you know, maybe have some type of worksheet to go through so they're really getting invested in trying yeah. to help their business. Pitching their, their company to an investor. Yeah. Right? You know, so those are just some of the things that uh, that cohort would mm-hmm. be doing. Yeah, together. learn how to negotiate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like, you know, women aren't necessarily taught that you're taught to be quiet. Right. Don't take right. a space. Or just Get, telling their story. Say thank you for what you're given, but mm-hmm. be outspoken. You can go ask for something. You can pitch your business to somebody. So mm-hmm. trying to make something like that where it's very valuable educational piece that they can go and grow their business. 
And, and we're working on that. On, on putting that together, Bree, you want to tell them about the survey that you got going? Yes. Yeah, so I'm working with some professors at ETSU and the College of Business and Technology, and we're putting together a survey that will go through the 10 counties that we've I covered, which is, you know, a large area. Um, but this way I can find what their unmet needs are, and then I can try to start tailoring, you know, services like this workshop, for example, to see what they feel like they don't have around to help them start or grow their businesses. Mm -hmm. So the content of that cohort, that curriculum is going to depend, you know, on the on the survey results. Yes. So yeah. I hope your viewers and listeners yes. will <laughs> take the survey when they see it come across their desk. Mm -hmm. That would be critical. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys sharing and just sharing a little bit more about the Women's, Women's Business Center. So, yes. um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. <laughs>